In the last video we created a basic level to start testing gameplay mechanics in and starting to code in Blueprint. In this video we're just going to create a basic actor component which will allow us to reuse a piece of code to create an effect in our level. I want to just lift these blocks up. You can select any object in the game world by pressing Q to, to activate the selection tool. You can see the arrow is blue up here. W will choose the movement tool. This will allow you to move objects in the world by grabbing one of the three arrows and moving them in one of the three axes. Red X, green Y, and blue Z. E will allow you to rotate objects in the game world. Again, you can see the tool switches up here, and I can also manually select the tool by clicking on these buttons. And the fourth button here, which you can switch to by using the R key on your keyboard is the scale tool. This allows you to adjust the scale of objects in those three axes as well. Be careful when adjusting the scale of objects in your level. It can be very easy to accidentally scale them in one axis more than the other axis and stretch and distort the appearance of the object. In this case that's not a problem because the square has a uniform white color to it. If you'd like to scale it in all dimensions simultaneously, select the central part of the widget here, and then when you move your mouse, you'll be able to scale it in all directions at the same time, at the same rate. This will avoid any distortion for the appearance of your mesh and any colors and textures that you're using. So I've got a series of cubes that I've just lifted up into the air here. I'm going to go into my content browser, right click, and create a new blueprint class. This blueprint is going to be an actor component. An actor component is an object which is spawned into the world attached to another component. They don't do anything on their own, but they're really useful for creating reusable pieces of code that you can attach to multiple objects in your game world to do the same thing again and again and again. So in this case, click to create the actor component. I'm going to name this um, I accidentally deselected it, so to rename any object here, you can select them and press F2 to activate the rename, or you can choose Rename from the options list if you right-click on the object. I'm going to name this AC for Actor Component Spin, S-P-I-N. This is going to be a simple script that causes the object to spin. Double-click on it to open the Blueprint Editor. Since these components do nothing on their own and must be attached to a parent object before they do anything, the first thing we want to do is obtain a reference to that parent object. Unreal is an object-oriented program. Nothing can see or access any other piece of code in any other object unless you explicitly tell it to. In order to get the owner for this object, I can use the Get Owner Blueprint node. I accessed that menu by right-clicking anywhere in the Blueprint screen, and I simply started typing to filter the results. You don't need to click inside the search bar, although you can if it's not working for you. So right-click, Get Owner. Only one result has come up because I have checked the context-sensitive box here, which means it is filtering out irrelevant results. The Get Owner node takes in, on the left-hand side, a target, in this case, the component itself. That's great. And returns here, on the right-hand side, a return value of an actor object reference. Since actors are virtually everything in Unreal, this could be a reference to any actor that you've attached this to. Sorry, any kind of actor. In order to store that, I'm going to create a variable to save this information. I could do that here in the variables options on the side here, by clicking Add, creating a new variable, naming it, and choosing an appropriate variable type from the list here. But instead, I'm going to right-click on this little blue node here, the return value, and choose Promote to Variable, which will automatically create a variable for me and choose an appropriate variable type and create a node on my Blueprint screen that will allow me to set the information to save the data to that variable. I'm going to, again, rename this variable owner ref for owner reference. We know that we have gotten our owner, obtained a reference to it, and saved it as the owner reference. This set node has two white pins on it. It requires executing to run. 
So I'm going to use the event begin play node that started on this blueprint in order to run this set node. The begin play node is called as soon as this object spawns into the world, so it's a very useful place to run your startup scripts. Now, just as a quick way of demonstrating that you can use reusable scripts here, I want to simply start this actor object, the owner, rotating. And I'm going to do that by getting a reference to the owner. In that case, I'm going to choose the variable here on the side, drag it and drop it into the blueprint, and select the get option. This is like a this is a pointer, a postal address, an arrow that simply says, get me this information. But I want to carry out a command once I have that information, and that is going to be add rotation. I have two options here. Local rotation will use the object's local space to rotate. World rotation will use the global grid to add rotational values. As a general rule, you're going to be working with local rotations far more than you are world rotations. So start with a local rotation. I'm going to hook up the event tick. This is not a very efficient way of doing this and could create problems if this code was being run on slower or faster computers. But for a quick test, it'll do just fine. Currently, I'm adding a delta rotation of zero. So if we were to run this code now, absolutely nothing would happen. I'm going to apply some de some test values into this delta rotation here. I'm just going to put 5 into the x and y rotation axes. Up here you can see the compile button has a yellow question mark over it. This means this code has not yet been compiled and we cannot test it effectively. Compile the code by clicking the compile button or pressing F7 if you prefer the keyboard shortcut. And then press save to clear this little asterisk, the star, next to the words AC spin here and save this the template. I can close this window now. With the actor component complete, I want to attach it to these cubes in the world here and see if I can make them spin. I'm going to select this big cube first and go into the details panel on the right hand side here. There is a green arrow here next to this list of components. When I click that I'll be able to choose my AC spin component from the other list. You can again just start typing to filter. With spin component added, I can test it now to see if that cube spins. I suspect it won't, but let's try it. I hit play, and sure enough, something is not working correctly. When I press escape, we are met with a wall of error messages. In this case, the error message is extremely useful because it tells us exactly what we need to do to fix the error. In this case, it is telling me that the mobility of a specific object in our level has to be set to movable if I would like it to move. With the cube selected, go into the details panel and underneath the transform there is an option for mobility. As you can see, it's currently set to static. This object is not baked into the world in a way that would allow it to move. If I choose the movable option and then retest my level, the cube begins to spin. I can attach the spinning components to every one of these objects in the world if I so wanted to. as long as I remember to set them to movable. Then when I hit play, everything will be spinning simultaneously. Whilst it's rather a silly little demonstration of what you can do with actor components to create reusable code, we can also use it to show you how you can create tools for your level designers. I press escape to drop out of this and open up my blueprint for the actor component again. The value for the delta rotation is what's called a magic number here. Hard-coded values with no explanation as to how they work. You'll want to avoid these in all of your programming. Instead, create your own variables. In this case, I'm going to create a new variable here called new rotation. And I'm going to choose its variable type to be a rotator. That matches the input here. If you mouse over the pin, it will tell you what this input is. 
a delta rotation, which expects a rotator as an input. Now that these match up, I'm going to compile the blueprint, drag my new rotation onto the blueprint, and select Get Rotation, and plug it directly into this node, avoiding the magic number issue now. There are no unexplained numbers on the screen here. Everything has a name and a variable associated with it. If I want to change this rotation, I can do so in the Details panel on the right-hand side here. But that's a little bit clumsy. I would have to keep switching between my level and my blueprint and changing those numbers as I go. Instead, if you check the box here in the Details panel for Instance Editable, it will cause this variable to become public. You can see that the I next to it is open. This variable can be accessed from other actors without you having to set up a specific link to them. In practical terms, now that that has been set to instance editable, I can compile, save the blueprint, come back to my level, and then when I select one of these boxes, go into the details panel, and look down at the um, variables and information inside it, AC spin contains a new variable called new rotation. That's the one that we just set up. And I can edit these numbers from the editor instead of having to open up the blueprint. So maybe set this to one, sorry, two, three, and three, on the second one over here, I can change it to just one, and this one right over on the end, something silly like 50. Each of them now has its own separate spin rate that you're able to set without having to go back into the blueprint and edit the code. For your level designers, setting up reusable components like this with exposed variables so that they can set values and adjust the movement speed or location of objects without having to adjust the code is extremely useful.